Good morning, Richard Eckley here. Happy Wednesday morning to you. Bit of a damp one here today, but never mind. We're on a Wednesday, so we're on a relationship Wednesday on your four keys to a healthier, happier you. And, you know, it's good to have focus in your life and something you want to move and something you want to aim for. But also remember that sometimes when we're sort of growing up, we sort of, in our later years, we want to provide more for our kids that we never had. So quite often we're thinking, oh, I never had this, I never had that. I want to provide that for my kids. So we focus on sometimes the material things we never had growing up. So providing our kids the material things that we never had. But as we grew up, if you sort of grew up, luckily, in, I grew up luckily in the country, and the emotional connection was brilliant because we just went out and played all the time. We went out and played with friends. We had family connections. We didn't have all the distractions we have today. In this technological world we live in today, everyone's always on their phone or on a game, and they don't use the skills of actually just connecting and talking to people one-to-one -one and face. And sometimes when we're sort of focusing on what we want to provide for our family, we go this way as well. We think, oh, I want to do what I can, provide everything I can for my family. But we don't realize it's the emotional connections that means more to a family than the physical things you can buy. The material things, you never look back and never think, oh, yeah, I had that material thing that was wonderful. You think back, oh, yeah, I connected with my grandparents or I connected with my parents or my siblings or had a best friend. It's the people we connect with that have the biggest effects on our lives. So sometimes it's good to think back, to, to presently think, right, okay, and... I need to work, I need to get earn money. That's a common thing we need to earn some money. We also need to spend time with my family. So perhaps it's just going for that walk or playing a game, getting the old board games out. Sometimes that can be a good of a trip down memory lane is getting old board games and playing that with the family when they're still interested in doing it. As they're in their, their teenage years, quite often they're not interested anymore and that could be gone. They may come occasionally and have a little game, but normally they're in, doing their own thing. So it's those informative years, probably from the age around sort of like six or seven up to around 13, 14, well, that's the most important part where you can really influence your child and get them to, to connect with them and, and give them support, give them backup and just talk with them and ask them how their day's going. Quite often when they're that age, they'll talk about things. They'll talk about their day. They'll talk about stuff. You probably can't even shut them up sometimes because they're chatting that much, which is lovely. So let them talk. Let them express themselves. So it's realizing, OK, then we don't want to focus on what we didn't have younger and try and make up for it. It's just supporting them anyway, supporting our kids, getting in touch with them, chatting with them, seeing if they're OK and saying we're there to support you. We're always acting as a guide. That's something we learned going, going through my, my own children. It's always act as a guide for your children. You don't try and tell them what they should do, what they shouldn't do. There are going to be laws, that, not laws, there's going to be sort of rules you lay down, which is for your own personal, what you want, which is great. But actually act as a guide. So you're actually guiding your child through so they can learn things, they can make mistakes, they can face problems, they can overcome the problems. If you're overcoming all your child's problems, they're never going to learn anything. Just letting them overcome their problems, face the problems, but there to support them and guide them, give them advice on the best way of doing something possibly, but let them go and do it and let them learn as they grow. Once you have experiences like that, it makes you more of a whole of a person because you've got more confidence because you know I've coped with that and I've sorted that, I've coped with that, I've sorted with that. But if someone's doing all that for you, you haven't got that experience, you, so you're never quite so self-confident. So it's just thinking, okay, then it's good to connect with our, our sort of children, if you like, Try and get off the phones a bit more, try and chat a bit more, go for that walk, play games. It's the emotional connections are so more important than the material things. And once we sort of get older in life, we look back and think, oh, yeah, it's the emotional connections I made that have made me. It's not the things I had. It's not my car. It's not my latest game. It's who I've connected with, who I've chatted to. So, yeah, it's all, it's all good. There we are. Have yourself a good one. All the best for now.